So in this demo here, I'm going to demo the difference between read committed and read uncommitted. And read committed is the default here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to run a transaction. And the transaction's going to be restricted from completing for two minutes so that I could show you the dirty data that is uncommitted and the data that's committed um, and what result set comes back depending on what you set the transaction level is for the session. So uh, let me go ahead and get started. Um, I created a simple table here and I in inserted a couple of rows. So let me do that um, and I'll show you the table. So what I'm gonna do in my transaction is I'm gonna insert a fourth row, name four, value four, down at the bottom. And I'm gonna update this first row up by ID here. And I do have a primary key here of ID. And the reason why I'm doing that is I'm showing you that this transaction doesn't lock the entire table. Depending on what type of statements you execute, it doesn't lock the entire table. It just locks particular rows or even a particular page of of uh, the index. So um, what I'm going to do uh, when I run this transaction is I'm going to show you uh, what is blocking and what is non-blocking when I do read committed. And then when I do read uncommitted, what is blocking and what is non-blocking. And uh, basically read uncommitted doesn't block at all because it just reads the dirty data. So um, let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to start my transaction and it's going to be it's going to de uh, be delayed for 2 minutes from actually completing so you so you notice in the bottom here it's run for 7 seconds now so it's still sort of stuck at this point and uh recommitted everybody sort of knows about recommitted because recommitted is the default and very rarely actually do people change recommitted to anything else other than recommitted um you'll notice here if i select all it's gonna block be because it's waiting for this transaction to finish so that it could show you all the consistent data that has been committed but since this transaction is not uh, finished yet it can't do that so it's blocking so I'm, I'm gonna cancel this uh, query here and I'm gonna show you this even though this session is recommitted I have this uh, table lock hint here that says no lock. So this is going to allow me to read data, uh, I mean read dirty data. So I'm going to hit execute here and you'll notice it comes back right away and it comes back right away with uh, exactly the dirty data you see. This first row is uh, changed by this update statement here and this last row was inserted here. So that doesn't block obviously because uh, it's allowed to read dirty data. Now this one's a little bit more interesting. The read ID equals 3. And this won't block because in my transaction here it just so, so happens that uh, SQL Server figured out that you know all it has to do is a row lock on these particular rows and not lock the whole table. Had SQL Server chosen to lock the whole table then this would have blocked but luckily it didn't, it just uh, locked particular rows or even a particular page of the index. Though uh, it's very doubtful actually locked the index, uh, the page of the index because um, uh, had it done that, uh, the table so small that the this third row here of ID3 would have been on the same page. So it actually went to the most minimal lock which is the row ID lock. Um, so this transaction is finished and I rolled it back. Um, let me run it again just to show you uh, some, some of the other interactions. And you'll see this actually does block because it's, it's not referencing any type of particular key. And so it's, it's blocking because it doesn't know if it's dirty data or not dirty data. And if, if I uh, cancel this query because it's blocking, and I'll show you some of the locks that are occurring. So th this is the lock on this sample table. And if you notice, it's a IX, which is intent exclusive, wh which means that it's 
uh, intent is to lock um, some of the child objects of that table, whether it's a page in the index or a particular row or a particular um, range of keys within the table. So that's what that in, uh, IX intent exclusive lock means. Uh, now if I go to this read uncommitted session here, I, I just switch between the read committed, which is the default. I, I actually have to execute this statement here because by default every session is read committed. And you'll notice nothing will block here. E everything will read the dirty data as you can see. This is the dirty data. Originally there's only three rows. Um, again, this reads the dirty data. This will read the dirty data. This didn't block. This didn't block. Whereas in this here, it does block. Notice this blocks. Same statement. This doesn't block. And, well, this won't block. So, all right. So hopefully now you have a clear picture and actually you could visualize what is actually occurring in SQL Server with these statements. And I hope this is helpful. Uh, definitely tune in for uh, my other videos on the other isolation levels, uh, repeatable reads, serializable, and snapshot. Uh, thank you for watching.